Welcome to this episode of Radio Tech by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about programming the Baofeng DM1701 for DMR with the PyStar Jumbo Hotspot using the CPS software. And this is going to be focused on the Brandmeister network. Uh, also worth note, if you don't have a ba Baofeng DM1701, this will work basically with any radio that uses the CPS software. Most of these uh, DMR radios have the same innards with different outsides. So if you don't have a Baofeng DM1701, uh, this will probably work for you if you're using the CPS software. With that being said, let's jump into it. So first and foremost, we need to do a little bit of intro, I think, to help explain what's going to be coming. There is a steep learning curve to DMR, and part of what I want to do in this video is to lessen that learning curve. So with that being said, let's talk about DMR a little bit. So one of the key aspects of DMR, for the most part, many of the networks like Brandmeister um, is formatted from a commercial service model and it's been adapted to amateur radio. This is important to understand because this is why it might feel like it's a square peg in a round hole because there are some features and aspects about the Brandmeister network and DMR which you may say, eh, this really doesn't fit amateur radio. Why is it there? Well, this is why it's here. And this is also why we have some of the added complexity of the uh, service. So with that being in mind, it's, it helps a little bit to understand some of the aspects we're going to have to deal with. The other piece, why does DMR have so much complexity in it? Well, analog radio is actually pretty simple. It's sort of like throwing a message in a bottle and hoping that the ocean tides take it somewhere. There's no destination assigned to the message and there's no routing structure outside of you're just throwing electrons in the air. With DMR, you're intending your message to go from point A, make it to point B with guaranteed delivery with that we're adding a lot of complexity and to do that very much like the internet because we're also using the internet there needs to be a hierarchical ontology to manage all this much like TCP IP because we're also going to integrate this with TCP IP and for those not familiar with TCP IP this is how the internet works this is the packet protocol that the internet uses to transfer information so with this being said, let's jump into the next aspect of this. So the Brandmeister network was born out of a handful of, of worldwide hams and software engineers who teamed up to create a global digital repeater system. Now again, this is based upon the Motorola TRBO, which utilizes talk group technology. Now again, as I've already mentioned, this is why it sort of feels a little bit funny. Uh, and, and so we have to kind of keep that in mind. And so the Brandmeister network, I, I really like the idea of it. There are a lot of digital networks out there, so this is far from the only one, but this is the one we're going to focus on. I suggest you go to this link, set up an account with Brandmeister if you're interested in DMR. It gives you access to the dashboard and many other things, which are pretty cool. But one of the things I do want to note is our Jumbo Hotspot is based upon uh, MMDVM. I'll spit that out technology and you can see of all the uh, hotspot slash repeaters on the Brandmeister network this is the predominant one so uh, pretty interesting you know, little uh, factoid but with that being said let's kind of further this a little bit more so one of the things we need to do is talk about a topology a little bit of a hardware topology in the OSI model we would call this like like a layer one layer two topology uh, so what we have is we have the radio. Now what a lot of folks new to DMR don't understand is the radio itself actually converts your voice from analog to a bunch of ones and zeros. It's not the hotspot that's doing the translation or the VoIP or the analog to digital conversion. It's the radio. So the radio is actually sending a bunch of ones and zeros to the hotspot, which the hotspot is then taking that message from the radio, packaging it up as a TCP IP package. Remember, we talked about that and sending that to your home router, which is then sent over the Internet to Brandmeister servers all over the Internet. And that Brandmeister server determines where that message gets sent to its final recipient from there. So think of Brandmeister as the post office. And so the uh, 
the hotspot and your router are sort of the postal carriers coming to your home and your radio is, is packaging up your package or envelope or message and, and sending it along. Uh, and you kind of see here, this is really centers on the, your DMR ID, which you get from radio.net. You should have already gotten. And with that, that sort of forms the preamble or package header, if you will, uh, informally of the TCP packet. So that gets put in there. So in other words, the TCP protocol handles getting it from the sort of source uh, hotspot, which we have here through your uh, home router, through the internet, through somebody else's router or repeater, through somebody else's hotspot to their radio. And so all this is done over TCP IP and your DMR ID sort of identifies your, your um, handle, if you will, per se. So again, the message can get back to you via the hotspot. So these two work in combination together. The other thing is when configuring the DM1701 for hotspot use, this is going to be slightly different than configuring it for a formal DMR repeater. So please don't confuse the two. There is going to be a little bit of difference and I'm just going to focus in this video on hotspots. All right, with that being said, I, I've already mentioned that we need some sort of hierarchical anthology to really understand how this works together. Now, at the crux of this anthology, what we have in the digital contact is the contact name, which is user defined. You can call it whatever you want. There is typically a name on the Brandmeister site, for example. You'll see I'm in Michigan, so I have a Michigan. It's a statewide call. I call it Michigan, they call it Michigan, but you could call it Michigan One. You could call it, I, you know, whatever you want, Great Lakes. It's up to you. Uh, but it identifies the contact name. Call type is either group or private. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but nine times out of 10, except for something like Parrot, or if you set up a private call ID, it's going to be group. Now, the real center of all this is the call ID, which is a number, an integer you will get from Brandmeister. This tells Brandmeister where to send or what room to send your messages. So, and the second is uh, call RX tone, no or yes, I put no first because nine times out of 10 and probably 99 out of 100, it's going to be no when dealing with the hotspot. The other aspect in the anthology we're looking at is going to be the channel information. Now, again, we're gonna jump into this a little bit more and go through each one of these step by steps. But what I wanna share here is how each one of these fits together to work with the one before it. That's why it's a hierarchy anthology. And I think if you understand this, and when I mapped this out and, and understood it like this, it made it a lot easier. Because now what we begin looking is the digital analog data. So channel mode, uh, we're obviously gonna set that to digital because this is going to be a digital message, right? So we're going to set a scan list from the list. We're gonna set power to low because we don't need a lot of power to connect to our hotspot in our home. Uh, channel name again this is once again user defined so you could have Michigan 1 going to Michigan favorite doesn't matter it's up to you uh, and then RX and transmit frequencies this is the frequency that you set in your uh, Pi Star hotspot that it's going to listen for your radio on and the final criteria is admit uh, criteria and so we're going to do channel free so if you do, I think it's always or what have you, you can step on other people which are talking and this admit criteria will only allow the transmit function to happen if the channel is open. So this is what I recommend setting it to. The second aspect is the digital data aspect or the digital radio configuration. Again, contact name, which you'll select from the digital contact list, uh, the group list from the group list, and then uh, repeater slot two. This is very important. Your hotspot, your jumbo hotspot, works as a nano repeater. And slots are basically a division of time slots. Now, in typical in a typical analog repeater, you will have a 25 kilohertz bandwidth signal. What happens in the digital world that gets split to 12.5 kilohertz and 12.5 kilohertz, i.e., slot one and slot two the uh, jumbo hotspot works on slot two or the uh, upper side of the 12.5k cut so uh, nine times out of ten you're going to be putting slot two if you have a problem and something is not working try selecting slot two 
and again finally in call criteria we're simply going to follow our admit criteria from the analog radio configuration with that being said the other elements which we will have to deal with are more for channel organization keep in mind that you can have thousands of channels i think the the um, DM1701 can have 3,000 digital channels. So how do you organize that? Well, you organize this by scan list, digital RX call groups, uh, and zones. And this also becomes more important if you're going to be using a repeater. For us using a hotspot, not as critical as if you're using a formal repeater. Okay, let's jump into it. So one of the first things I want to share is a little bit talking about the navigation with inside the CPS software if you're new to the CPS software. So the first thing is once you connect to your radio you're going to want to download from your radio which you can see up at the top where it's read and write to radio. So you want to read in from your radio just to connect to your radio so CPS knows what your radio is. And then off to the left you'll get this whole navigation tree. Now my radio's already been pre-programmed so you'll see a bunch of stuff over there. If your radio is brand new you probably won't have very many things over there at all. Okay with that being said a couple of the other pieces to uh, understand about it is it works like everything else in a typical Windows world. You click on a plus it expands the tree and then if you want to add in most cases for example like a zone or digital contact you can right click on the folders and uh, an add function will come up and you can click on that also many times in the pane itself which you see off to the right in the navigation window you can also click add if it's available to say for example add a group add a channel add something uh, also as I've already mentioned uh, to the right you can see the navigation window all these child windows pop up in this single parent window and are contained in this and these are referred to in Windows world as modal windows anyways um, you know you'll have to to navigate you may have to close these and things like that to make room it's a little bit of an annoyance if you ask me but it is what it is so with that being said that's most of the basic navigation now the other thing is under file and you can also see the file folder and the disk up top uh, as well as the file command in the menu you can save out and I highly suggest saving up backups of this code block because what we're going to create as a result of all this is a code plug. So let's look first at general settings. So really most things here except for the two listed are just really going to be for your preferences around how does the radio operate. But for DMR you're going to need to give it a radio name and a radio ID which you get from radioid.net. So you need to have the radio ID or the DMR ID because as we mentioned this is really sort of the crux of identifying this is your postal address if you will and if you don't have this um, nothing's going to work so if you haven't gotten it yet please go ahead and get it from radio radioid.net so the next I added this in it really has nothing to do directly with DMR uh, but it, I suggest going into menus enabling program radio because this allows you to make manual modifications to radio programming and so again when you have a bunch of DMR channels you may want to make some changes on the fly from the radio this allows you to do it so just a little bonus tip if you will digital contacts now as we mentioned this is the crux of DMR and how it all works and so you got to get this right for everything else to work so as we've said before we have contact name which is user defined so as you see I've got TAC 310 Michigan Midwest now for the most part I've copied most of these directly from the Brandmeister names I just use whatever names they used I entered them because personally I just think that works best at least being a newbie to DMR in the future you can again name them whatever you want you also notice that everything except Parrot is a private call type and I'll talk about Parrot a little bit more in a minute and then also call tones are all known so if you're in the US you can use this page where I have the link off to the right to go and get all the rooms your talk groups uh, probably better put from the Brandmeister group now I put the ones in here that are of interest to me 
Uh, again, different ones depending upon your state location could be of different interest to you. As I've said before, the digital contacts form the crux of the DMAR configuration and, and can be thought of postal code. So again, this is the most important aspect. Now, as I promised, I wanted to touch on Parrot for a minute. What Parrot is, is basically it's a test functionality. So if you select Parrot, you key up and you say something in the radio, it will send it out to the DMR network and send it back to you and repeat what you say. So this is a good way to test that everything is working in your DMR system. So I highly suggest adding Parrot to your list of digital channels. With that being said, let's jump into it a little bit further. All right, so the digital RX call group. Now this is where it gets into a little bit of complexity and this is more so for if you're gonna use a formalized repeater. I'm not gonna get into, I, I mean, we could probably spend a whole session on formalized repeaters, call groups, their you know limitations and why we need to break things up. Uh, because obviously if we're operating in a shared environment, uh, we need to slice things up uh, more finite and then also match with what the repeater owner is set up. With our hotspot, we don't have to worry about it. My suggestion here is, is you create one list. Now I created Digigroup 01. I, I would suggest probably maybe better put just name it hotspot and put all your digital uh, contacts in that hotspot. All right, zone information again. Zone information is again how we can manage this because scanless zones and groups are really to help us organize thousands of channels. And so I'm just really touching on the, the very top of all this uh, as an introductory. You can spend hours, or maybe even days messing with this if you want. What I did is I created a, a single zone and I split and in this case with the CPS software, you can split it between channel A and channel B. As you see here, I made channel A my digital contacts and I made channel B my um, analog contacts. Just kept it that simple. And this way I can switch back and forth between channel A and channel B and get either my analog or digital content as, as I want. Now the next piece here is the scan list and again most of this is self-evident and again as I've also mentioned if you right click on the scan list uh, folder from the navigation tree you can add you can also go to the bottom and add most of this is self-explanatory priority channel one and two so you can pick which channels you want it to focus on uh, also last designated transmit channel uh, in, in hold times and everything. Again, if you're familiar with analog radio, this is pretty much all the same. Nothing really new here. So again, one of the, the pieces, is, as you've noticed, I've created a scan list name of digital. So I have a digital and an analog scan list. And so I just pick from the two. Now here's where it gets to be a little bit more complicated in sort of the meat and potatoes of everything in setting up uh, your radio. So now we're going to focus on setting this up as a digital contact so or a digital channel if you will based upon a digital contact probably better put. So as we see here our digital analog data so first is the channel mode so obviously we're going to select digital because we this is a digital channel. Uh, we're going to select our scan list. In this case, as I mentioned before in the previous screen, it's digital. Squelch, I just leave set to normal. Uh, reference, uh, our RX ref frequency and everything, don't really mess with those. Uh, one of the things you might want to change is TOT. Now, I haven't listed that. I don't think that's critical. Uh, but just know if you're having potentially some problems, look at TOT. But more than likely, you won't. Uh, the other piece is power is going to be set to low because again you know one watt is more than enough in your house to talk to your hotspot again channel name we can use it to find this so again you can get all kinds of crazy abstractions in your channel names um, but you know be careful not to confuse yourself I use just matching nomenclature to keep things simple with, with receive frequency and transmit frequencies these are going to be the frequencies which you're going to transmit to your hotspot on and you've already configured your hotspot to receive on now this is simplex so obviously these two are going to match your admit criteria which we've already talked about will be channel free now once this is all set up we'll move to the digital radio configuration 
With that, again, we will select contact name. From here, we'll move to the digital radio configuration, which we'll select the contact name, which will come from the digital contact list. We'll select from the group list, and then we will select our repeater slot. Again, remember, very important, for the Jimbo hotspot, we're going to select slot two, and then we're going to match our uh, admit criteria and follow admit criteria from the previous admit criteria under radio configuration. From here, that's basically it. You've completed. From here, you'll simply write this out to the radio and you're done. So again, hopefully this has taken a little bit of the mystery out of programming your DM1701 for DMR. And again, if you follow all these steps, you should be good to go. Actually, the biggest challenge I faced was the repeater slot. Is It comes normally defined to one. Now, one of the things you would think is that in a hotspot scenario, it would be set to one or the initial or the bottom side of the 12.5K or the 25K divide. But in this case, for some reason, it's set to slot two. Now, maybe you can reconfigure that in PyStar. I don't know, but that appears to be the default setting. And again, all this should, in general, work. So you should now be able to go to your radio, unplug it from the connector, turn it on, and begin scanning your digital scan list and hear DMR communication and as well as speak on those same channels. My suggestion would be first to try Parrot, make sure everything is working with your hotspot. Also, you should be able to see on your Jumbo hotspot screen the connections happening. So if all that's working good, then you're all set. One of the things to keep in mind that I've also discovered with the Jumbo Hotspot is sometimes it has a problem connecting to the internet and you have to unplug the power, replug the power once or twice to get it to work. So if you're getting un unassigned address on your Hotspot, that is what's happening. It's not binding correctly with the internet and you need to power it off, power it back on. So with that, if you have any suggestions or comments, please hit me up in the comments below. If you have questions, I'll try helping you out. Uh, again, this is as straightforward as I can make it, and I hope it helped you out. And if it did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button because I'm going to be doing more in DMR. So cheers, and we'll see you in the next video.